And to discuss this further, let's now bring in retired Major General Dennis Thompson in the conversation. He is a former NATO Task Force Commander. Thank you for your time, sir. Good evening, Akshay. Good evening. How will these tanks, according to you, alter the trajectory of Russia's control of the battlefield? Well, what's interesting here is the, is the sheer number, the quantity of tanks that have been committed. And so if I go to my scorecard here, I see that the U.S. has provided 31 Abrams, as you mentioned. But it's not just Germany with 14 Leopard 2s, Poland with 14, Norway with 36, Netherlands with 18, and, of course, the U.K. with 14 Challengers. There are 14 tanks in a, in a tank company. And so what's interesting here is this all adds up to about nine tank companies. And when you put that together with mechanized infantry, mechanized artillery, and rocket artillery, you have the makings of about four brigade combat teams. This is significant combat power. There is, however, one small uh, fly in the ointment, if you will. It's going to take an awful long time, as the U.S. mentioned, to transport this kit there. It's going to take, uh, as well, a, a long period of time to train people up on this equipment. And by long, I mean a couple of months minimum. And finally, lo lo the logistics, once you get in the, onto the battlefield in Ukraine, are going to be complicated because Ukraine has inherited a real mixed bag of different types of equipment. That doesn't mean it shouldn't be sent. It's just going to be another challenge that the Ukrainian military has to, um, has to deal with. And they're getting lots of help from the West. Uh, but nevertheless, it's good news because it rounds out the brigade combat teams that have already been promised to, um, to Ukraine. And that's a very important point indeed, sir, that it could take a couple of months before all of this actually reaches the front lines in Ukraine. In the interim, how do you expect Russia to respond to this move? Well, they're going to respond exactly as they've responded already. They're going to continue to destroy civilian infrastructure. They're going to continue to throw conscript soldiers at that useless, at the objective at Bakhmut, which they're slowly making progress towards. And they're going to bleed themselves out uh, in an attempt to, to, to make some headway in Ukraine. But they're just not going to succeed, in my humble opinion. There is some talk of them mobilizing behind uh, behind the lines in Russia and in, in Ukraine proper. But the real, the real problem for them is, of course, they're drawing more and more on older and older equipment, and Ukraine is stocking up on newer and newer equipment. Mm -hmm. Ukraine's morale is on the rise, and Russia's morale is collapsing. So I don't think we're going to see a big change until uh, Ukraine has been rearmed. This really is a race to see which side can rearm first and who will have the better quality in terms of equipment and soldiers. And I believe that the, the pendulum has swung firmly in the Ukrainian direction. Meanwhile, there is also a lot of pressure on Canada to send tanks. Uh, what's your take on that? Well, we know that Canada has 100 uh, Leopard 2s. They have um, 80 Leopard 2A4s, they're called, an older model. And I will point out that it's the same model that Turkey uses. And they went into Syria with Leopard 2A4s, and they lost eight of them. Now that's interesting. However, it could be it could be it could be accounted for by the tactics that were used by the Turkish army, and I, I won't go any further there. But we also have 20 Leopard 2A6s, which is precisely the tank that's being being promised to the U Ukraines. Um, and so the question here is: Will Canada pony up, let's say, 14 of these tanks and form another company in order to round out these these brigade combat teams? I don't have any inside baseball. And I'm sure that this, uh, there's a briefing note on the minister's desk somewhere where they're going to make this decision in short order. Okay, we'll wait for, of course, that announcement. But for the time being, retired Major General Dennis Thompson, appreciate your time and insights. Thank you for joining us, sir. Thank you, Akshay.